Hi, beautiful souls. My name is Sadhana and welcome to my channel. Today I will share with you nine independently published tarot decks that have made their way into, into my collection over the past year or so. Top left is Lily Black. This is the Slow Tarot, Deck of the Bastard, Rosetta. In the front row here is the Way Home, Trip and Wait, Way of the Panda, Winter Wait, and this is Bubba Studios' Alice Tarot. Before we get to the cards, let's have a look at a few of the similarities and differences among these decks. First of all, cardstock. There is quite a range in this group from standard playing card. So for example, the Slow Tarot, this one here, the Deck of the Bastard, the the cards from Tarot Collectibles, uh, the Way Home Tarot are very standard playing card kind of stock. Super easy to shuffle. And then the GSM really is a different quality, a different caliber of card in the Lily Black, the Rosetta, uh, Way of the Panda. And there's something very special about the card stock as well too. It's quite thin, but because it has all of this uh, gold... Uh, I don't even know what you call it. The shiny gold on the back as well as the front, it just feels like a different quality of, of paper in the, uh, in the Bubba Studios deck as well too. As far as shuffability goes, even though the GSM is really bumped up, especially in these three decks here, I love to riffle shuffle and back bridge and I have no problem with either, with any of these decks here shuffling. So that is good news as far as I'm concerned. Cost is another really interesting um, factor, and maybe I'll talk about that a, a little bit more uh, later in the video. But just to give you an idea, these nine decks here are over 70 Canadian dollars. So the decks I showed you in the previous video were under 70 Canadian dollars. These are all over and go as high as 130 Canadian dollars, which is a lot of money for a tarot deck as far as I'm concerned. But what goes into the cost of a deck is really interesting. And I think when we're purchasing a deck, we really need to keep that in mind. So if you've done any background uh, looking into the Bubba Studios decks and you know how all of those cards are staged and costumes, you can begin costumed, you can begin to appreciate the cost of the production cost of those decks. The Lily black comes from France. This one comes from Ireland and the rest of them pretty much come from the U.S. except for Way of the Panda which is a Canadian publication. So sometimes that is a factor. It also depends the number of runs that the uh, creator is going to, you know, the money that the creator is going to invest in the initial run of the of the deck. And then there's decks like the Deck of the Bastard which have lots of different customizations and so the print run is very low and hence the deck cost is high and then you get an option to pay for all of those different add-ons. Very specifically I wanted to give you an example. So the Lily Black here that comes from France is a beautiful cardstock. It's printed on black paper the, um, it must be like 350 GSM. It's just amazing. And it has also this gold leaf on the back of the cards. Just, it's a really beautiful, it's one of those decks that sounds beautiful when it shuffles. And it comes in a two part um, hard box with a little uh, cheat sheet as well too. So that, that's the Lily back. That was Lily Black. That was 71 euros, including shipping from France to Canada. In the previous video, and you can go back go back to the very beginning of the video, I showed you the Jonasu, Jonasa Jaus, Jonasa Jaus, and the Stunning Tarot. Those two decks shipped in the same box from Spain to Canada, and the cost of both of those decks was 61 euros. So 10 euros less for two decks than one deck from 
approximately the same, you know, same kind of uh, shipping costs. I did not pay, fortunately, um, customs on either of those packages. However, you can't compare those two decks with this single deck. As I showed you in that video, the edges are not perfect. The corner rounding, it's not precise. It's not done by a high quality um, playing card printer. There's no gold leaf. They come in tuck boxes. The artwork is absolutely beautiful, and I love the artwork on all three decks in very different ways, but the production quality really comes into play when you're purchasing an indie deck, and so that might be something that you want to explore a little further. And the last thing I want to mention here before we get to the cards is what I consider quite an error that I made. If you go back, and I'll put a card up above in this video, to where I compared the groovy weight to the trip and weight. You can see all of the extra cards. I purchased the expansion pack for this particular deck here. And in hindsight, I'm not sure why I did that. Because I ended up paying between the, the original deck, the expansion pack, and I think I paid a little bit extra for the custom box. So when you order cards from Tarot Collectibles, you have an option of purchasing just a plain white box or a custom box. So this is what the, the custom boxes look like. So it's just a tuck box with the, to match the deck. That's the one for, for this deck here that I'm talking about, this one here that I bought the expansion pack for. I ended up paying about 130 Canadian dollars for everything, which is ridiculous in my opinion and quite regrettable because this one turned out not to be my favorite. I really prefer the groovy. And so this was about 130 Canadian dollars and there's no guidebook, tuck box, and uh, there's a PDF online, okay? This deck here from Bubba Studios, which is, I also purchased a beautiful glossy um, guidebook by Karen Mahoney to go with the deck and it comes in a gorgeous box. Uh, a hinged box. I'm sure you've seen the Bubba, these ones. So it comes in this gorgeous box. And you get the little white book as well. Okay, so and I purchased the extra book. So that was about 130 Canadian dollars. So I got all of that from Ireland with the extra book for the same cost that I got this deck, playing card stock, expansion cards from the US. So sometimes I think I make these decisions a little too hastily and spontaneously. And when you go to Tarot Collectibles website, and I have nothing bad to say against them. I think their whole project is really creative. Um, but that was a very much an impulse purchase to get those expansion cards when it wasn't really necessary at all. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. And let's get to the cards. Alrighty, let's have a look at the two decks from Tarot Collectibles and I'll tell you exactly what version these are because there's a few different versions of both of these deck, decks on their website. So tarotcollectibles.com. The, on the right is the Winter Weight and the edition that I have is the Borderless Winter Weight 2018. Currently it's on their website for $53. There's also a new version of the deck, which has a different back. I believe it's blue and it has titles on it. So I'm just going to turn these over. These ones are borderless and have no titles. So the new variation on the deck has the, um, the bar at the bottom with the card titles in it. And a few of the cards have changed. And I did see a side by side on Simon's channel of the Hermit's Cave where you can look at the two variations of the winter weight side by side. And there's a couple of things about this deck. One, I think it's fun to have a winter deck. I really, um, I got this around maybe just after Christmas time. So I hadn't had, I didn't have a lot of readings at the time, so it didn't really get used, but I definitely will use it as a fun deck during that season because I think it's nice to have the snowflakes and the snow and to have that that winter theme in that regard. One of the things that really bugs me in this deck and maybe for the hermit it's okay but to me the hermit is um, 
maybe not so much in the Rider weight. I don't know. But when I think about the Hermit, the Hermit is moving towards a cave where she, he will meditate. The Hermit is um, moving towards a place where they can be in seclusion. And in the Rider weight, you see the Hermit is standing still. And in this deck, you'll notice a lot of the figures have the snow kind of piled on them, almost as if they, they haven't been moving for a long, long time. And so you, can, you might notice that as we go through and, and, um, and look at the cards. Now on the left is the Trippin weight. And what you see here are going to be the cards that I chose to leave in the deck. So these are the cards. Some of them might be from the expansion pack is what I'm saying. And this particular version of the Trippin weight has the borders on it. And now it is, so the bordered version, this one here is $53. And there is a borderless version of it now, I believe as well too. So you'll have to go to their website and check that out. So you can get this with, with or without borders. And so that's one of the things I've learned about tarot collectibles is that when a deck first comes out, it seems that it comes out with borders. And then after a while, the deck seems to come out borderless or another variation comes out. So for example, there's a black light deck coming out now. And so it likely will come out eventually in a couple of different versions, something for everybody. And I really like this sun card. I think it's, it's, um, there's something about the energy of the Gopala. So Gopala is the baby Krishna on the back of the elephant. It just feels really, really hopeful to me. And I do like the colors in that hermit card. And I love how they have the Christmas star. At least that's what it looks like to me, right? The star over Bethlehem in that eight of cups. And that king of cups with all the water behind his throne he doesn't look so separated. You know how in the Wait Smith deck he looks very separated because there's that um, kind of cement um, thing that he's on. But here it doesn't look like there's that much separation. And all the peace symbols and so forth and the colors are really cool. If you want to see it side by side with the groovy, I did do a side by side and I'll, I'll put a card up for you so you can see that. And in that video I also go through and show all the extra cards that come with both decks as well as the expansion pack and there's a real gentleness in this strength card and I love that they they chose the moose I'm not so crazy about this judgment card it, it is the same Pope that is in the Hierophant card in the deck so this is one card I would definitely switch out and I believe the card is different in the new variation and I I do really like this I love you know, if you're going to have a cheesy Knight of Cups, why not this one? So this one has the um, all the groovy flowers on the horse, as well as the all you need is love coming out of the out of the cup. So yeah, so you can go to my side by side. You can go to Simon's side by side to see both of these. But if you like cards with borders, you know you do have that option, which is really it's really nice. And sometimes we want a borderless deck and sometimes we want a deck with borders. It depends how you like to weave your story. And I think also what kind of a table you're reading on, right? If you if the background of your table is really, really busy, it's nice to have borders. But if you have a, a solid background, I think that does make a difference. I love the quilt here. It's really kind of cool. And this reminds me of... Uh, what's that musical? The Technicolor Dream Coat. That might not be the exact name, but you know what I mean. So yeah, so I think this studio has done a really interesting and fun job with its cards. And I think I won't purchase any more unless they come out with something, you know, really different. There's a particular theme that that is of interest to me like this I think this is really beautiful this four of swords outdoors yeah I wasn't going to pull this many cards anyway this is the trip and weight bordered version so this is 
the earlier version. And then this one is the Winter Weight 2018 without the titles. The Way of the Panda Tarot is by Kimberly M. Tsan. If you're not familiar with Kim, her social media handle is Fables Den. Her website is fablesden.com. Level up tarot plus life. This is a really fun little deck. The artist, the artist, the artist is Celia LaBelle. And she did such a beautiful job, not only with the pandas, but the background and the background scenery of each of the decks with the flowers and the butterflies and the bamboo is absolutely gorgeous. This deck does come with a little white book and it's quite well done. Quite a chunky little white book. I did order the extra guidebook and it is available on Amazon I believe and when I ordered this with Kickstarter I got the four extra cards so I'm not sure if those still come with the deck or not they are the stargazing panda witchy kind of like a high priestess vibe and then the caffeinated panda, panda and dream space I generally don't leave these in the deck when I when I play with them so these kind of sit at the bottom of the box. So let's have a look at the cards. Really nice card stock. I love this five of wands. And I think more creators are doing this with the five of wands. You know, that energy of the fives. Yes, it's conflict. Yes, it can be really, really challenging energy. But that is perception. And I think it's all about your reaction to the energy. It's about how the trigger affects you. And sometimes we need to see a five of wands. I'm just going to switch these because the natural light is over on the other side. Um, you know what I mean? Like we need to see the playfulness in the five of wands. And sometimes that's the energy that it actually is. So I, I enjoy a deck that has a variety of, and a different perception on looking at the cards from how we usually see them. Love the little mouse on the strength card. Kind of reminds me of Ratatouille, right? If you saw the Disney movie Ratatouille. And here's the tower. And the thing I like about this card is we have the bamboo shoots coming up in the, the floor of, of the forest. So we have this new life. We have this new growth. And it's really kind of funny how this fire He's just managing the fire here. There's something funny about this card. There's a few cards that are quite serious. And I won't show you the devil card today because it's um, I've pulled it out. It's in a I'm gonna do another video soon about the devil, which is my card for 2020. And I've taken the one out of here because it's very, very powerful. A great, great Queen of Swords. Love the attitude of her little panda bear too. And Ten of Pentacles. A lot of energy there. So I have done a full walkthrough of this deck and I will put a card up here for you to click on if you want to go through the whole deck. I decided to purchase the Way Home Tarot after I had read the creator's tarot book, WTF is Tarot. This is an amazing tarot book for beginners and experienced readers alike. I wholeheartedly recommend it. And actually I should do a video very soon about tarot books because I have quite a collection and I would love to share them with you. But today is about the cards, so let's have a look at the deck. It does come in a two-part box. I don't believe it comes with a little white book because this is quite a thin little box. And these are the cards. If you want to see more of the cards, I use these cards for the follow-up readings for my uh, 2020 year ahead card readings and I'll put a link up here for you and you can have a look at more of the cards and also look at your 2020 readings. This is one of my favorite cards and she does this really well in the deck. There's a few cards where we see this kind of twinkle of light and magic in the stars or Depends on how you're looking at the at the image, but this three of wands I find very, very powerful. And there's a definite connection in this deck with flowers. So if you like to bring in the energy of plants, you're going to get this, get that in this deck. It's really beautiful. And there's such a unique take, unique take on some of the cards. Four of wands is so powerful and I love how that energy is coming together. And then we have the fun celebratory lights in the background. 
love that there's no people. And this Eight of Wands is just, I think I spoke to a card yesterday in the, in the previous video, in the part four. I'm not sure, but this Eight of Wands, how the energy from all those wands is either coming together and creating the lightning or the lightning is moving into these Eight of Wands, which is less conceivable. But there's something really, I don't know, I just, I love the degree of energy in that card. And this card has uh, come up many times, very significantly and powerfully in readings. And this Nine of Wands also is a completely different, at least I see it differently. And while I have read her book and read various parts of her book a couple of times, I don't always go back and stick to her meanings because sometimes in these cards, I see something very unique and very special. And so for me, this is one of those festivals where you go to the river and you light the lantern and you send, that, send those lanterns up to release the energy, either in celebration or, you know, in transition. And such a good card. The court cards are all in silhouette, I believe. And you have within the silhouette the energy of the of the suit. So it's really well done. Anyway, and I like this Five of Pentacles very much. I see the potential for the seeds. So while the seeds have, um, sorry, while the tomatoes on the vine have, you know, we're in the fall and the tomatoes have not been picked and so they've rotted, their seeds are still there. And so all that potential is still there and the plant is very much alive. Yeah. So this is the Way Home Tarot by Bakara Wintner and artwork by Autumn Whitehurst. Next is the Lily Black by Celia Melsville. It's an absolutely gorgeous deck. As I said, it's printed on a black paper. At least I'm pretty sure that's the process, but I noticed one or two cards. There's a little bit of chip and white is showing through. So I'm not sure how, what that actual process is. One of the other things you should know about this deck is that the artwork is slightly different than in Lily White which is kind of cool. They're not, and not only do you see something different from the dark and the white deck, but the actual art itself in the images is ever so slightly different. And sorry, black on black is not the best way to see this deck. It has a luminescence to it. It's truly beautiful. And in the Lily Black, you do see different aspects of the cards that you don't see in the Lily White Tarot, which I love, by the way. In it, for example, this energy, <coughs> excuse me, this energy here, you don't see this, or I don't see this in the Lily White. And to me, this looks like a cup. So this is the judgment card. And we have this kind of cup-like shape energy rising here, and then the butterfly rising out of that. It's, it's magnificent. This is one of my favorite cards in this deck, particularly in the black. And you don't see this in the lily white. Like in the lily white, I did not notice this, the water here. And this portal is really something. I love the energy of the, of the green and the six of swords. So there's no titles on these cards. The guidebook is in French. And her name is on the cards, but it's so tiny, it doesn't really distract at all. This moon card is really cool. And I know other creators do this as well, too. So what you see in the reflection is not what you see above the water, but the reflection is howling. And it is a completely different. Um, so I think we have a dog above the water and a wolf, wolf down below. Kind of cool. This is the world card. I don't know if you can see, we have a hand. So there's a hand here holding all of this, the lotus, the different flowers, and then we have fish and the roots from the tree. It's just really cool. And then we have the, call it what you want, Star of David, the hexagram, the energy of the, the blade and the chalice. It's a really great card. Here's the lovers. Four of Pentacles. 
these you see these more in the dark in the black deck the the use of the the pebbles it looks like to me this is the devil card again looks completely different in the lily white and the lily black the animals are really done well in this deck and i did not consider this to be an animal deck but each of the minor suits in this deck has an animal sigil and they carry through for the whole suit and they're done really well. So I, there's so many things I love about this deck. I will link at some point either in cards or in the description box below the different videos I've done about Lily White and Lily Black. The Slow Tarot by Lacey Bryant also comes in a two-part box. And it does come with a little brown book. It's very thin. This deck has so much going on in it. It's a wonderful deck to use your intuition and to allow different symbols to arise into the readings. I've done a full walkthrough and quite a thorough review of this, and I will put a link in the card up below, unless, of course, I run out of cards. I can only do five in a video. One of the things I do recommend with this deck as you're beginning to work with it is you have a computer near you and you go to the website where you can see the full paintings and then you can zoom in on the paintings to look at all the little details because that really does help when you first get to know the deck and then you can see what is on the um, on the on these wheels here. I love this world card and there's an alternate world card that you can choose. There's one with a tree, but I, I prefer this one. I'm just showing you a few of my, my favorite cards here. There is definitely uh, an earthiness to the suit of fire in this deck. And yes, we have the orange poppies, which connects to the energy of fire and we have the wands and we have the orange in the sky. But I love that connection of fire with earth in the two and the three of wands. It's really well done. Oh, this is what I wanted to show you. So remember we looked at, there was a, was it the last deck? The, oh, it was the panda deck. So here we have five children playing with sticks. And it's that similar energy to that, oh, what is it? There's that fine line, you know, where we just take it too far and it no longer is good banter it becomes actually violent or harmful and that I think is one of the important lessons in the in the five of wands oh I've shown you a lot of wands here I think this might be my favorite suit um, lacrosse team here I see this one at the beach so here she's connecting that energy of fire to the energy of water but you might not see that four of swords love love this card I really like how she mixed this up so normally we would see this shape in the Four of Wands, but here we're seeing it in the Four of Swords. And this deck, this uh, particular card still reminds me of the suit of swords in, I'm going to forget the name, the Shemonet Tarot by Eden Gallanter, which is, um, does the suit of swords so brilliantly. And the pages are really well done in this deck. So much energy. And I can feel the, the energy of the um, the air, right, in that suit of swords. There's another one, page of coins. If you are interested in seeing the whole deck and going to, you know, listen to some more of my thoughts on the cards, which cards have provoked conversation or even controversy, please go to um, go to my review. The Alice Tarot by Bubba Studios is the only Bubba Studios deck in my collection. And I'm really glad that I have one. And this one has worked really well for me. Such a beautiful production. This is the second edition. And I know there's videos out there saying the first edition is better than the second edition. But I'm quite happy with this deck. The hinged box is really, really lovely, really well done. And the production quality on these decks has just kind of made my jaw drop in a former life. Well, actually this life, just a former stage of this life. I did a lot of costume making myself. And so I just really appreciate all that has gone into these cards and creating the sets for these cards. It's kind of, it's amazing. 
really, really amazing. And yeah, so in the guidebook, which I mentioned, and I probably will include this in that video, is um, it's really something. Karen Mahoney has gone into great detail. So she's writing about the RWS Association and why that this particular scene was chosen for the Two of Swords. And so we get an information about the Alice story. So from Through the Looking Glass, which is what that is from, and then how that connects to the Alice story. And it's very, very well done. And she has lots of illustrations from Sir John Tenniel as well as other illustrators who have illustrated Alice as well. So you get lots of background information on both of the Alice stories if you're not familiar with them. And here, so this is soon after she's fallen down the hole, the rabbit hole, and she finally gets the key after getting small and big, small and big, and then goes out into Wonderland for the first time. Real, I love how they did that through the stone the stone wall. You can see the, perhaps the, I forget what the process is called, but we have this luminescence on the cards. The faces are so well done, the expressions on the faces. And this is a perfect choice for a scene for the High Priestess. In a few moments earlier, she was sitting with her two cats in a chair and ha was having this conversation with herself and with her cats and then makes this conscious decision to step into the looking glass world and see what's on the other side of the mirror. Hmm. I'm a little bit in love with this story and after I spent some time doing my videos on the Dame Darcy Queen Alice and then I acquired this deck, it's just given me a real appreciation for the, the layers and the levels of storytelling with the tarot. So if you have the right story, and Alice is one of them, and you are familiar with the story and you're familiar with other associations and of course you can bring in intuitive stuff as well too you just have this uh, unlimited potential for diving into various meanings in the cards and having that other layer of the story just brings in so much more I did a video about storytelling and the tarot you might want to look at Jabberwocky Dame Darcy chose the Jabberwocky for um, the Page of Swords as well, too. But in her deck, she has Alice. And to me, this looks like one of the knights out with the Jabberwocky. So slaying the Jabberwocky. So the Jabberwocky is a poem, right? It's a poem, a nonsense poem full of all of these words created by Lewis Carroll. And to slay one's jabberwocky, think of the swords and think of language and words and the poetry and wrapping your tongue around it and being able to understand and articulate and use and deliver those words. So to slay your jabberwocky is a really perfect, it's a beautiful metaphor um, for this card here. And then there's your fool card. So that is the Alice Tarot by Bubba Studios. This is the Rosetta Tarot by M. M. Moline, and the version that we're looking at today is the Papyrus Gold Edition. There's a few variations of this deck that are available on the website. The Tabula Mundi in this, side is, in this size is no longer available. You can get the mini, but not the full-size tarot cards. The Tabula Mundi comes in a red box. The Rosetta comes in a navy blue box, two-part two -part box. So let's have a look at the cards. This is a Thoth-based deck. Stunning, stunning artwork. You do get with the deck this little cheat sheet here. So you have the, the numbers and the glyphs for the suits, the glyphs for the quartz. Okay, and then on this side there's a pronunciation. So you can actually read the glyphs at the bottom if you're if you want to add that into, into your study. 
this is one of those decks where I could just get a cup of tea and sit and look at the cards. The artwork is out of this world amazing. This is the 10, so the 10 of air. Look at that ace of water, ace of cups. Oh, so many beautiful things happening here and the symbols. Do you see these little like water nymphs here coming out of this water? And then we have the moon symbols. It's really like a one card at a time kind of study. And eventually I will share with you my journey with the thaw. Um, but today we're just gonna look at a few of the cards. This is the, so we have the symbol for water and then the glyph for queen. I do like, sorry, I've pulled a lot of water cards here. Here's a fire card. So here's the glyph for fire and the glyph for princess. Hmm. That owl is so beautifully drawn. So that's the eight of pentacles. Yeah, there's another cup card. And so the variation of the, the shades of the blue and the oranges within each suit vary a little bit, but you really can pick up the energy of the suit. Sorry, I haven't shown you another, another major. Let's do another, let's find one more major before I, just give me a second here. Here's the fool. Another card loaded with symbology. The moon. The phoenix. <laughs> the phoenix in the judgment card. Kind of cool, isn't it? How we've got what looks like perhaps moon cycles, but the infinity symbol here in, in the light. And then look at the hands. We've got the hands and the feet here in this energetic body over the phoenix. Yeah, oh, there's another cup card. There's the world. So yeah, so that's the Rosetta Tarot by M. M. Maline. The last deck that we'll look at today is the deck of the Bastard. This is no longer available on Etsy. You need to go to tarotby7.com to order the deck. And not only can you select custom backs for this deck, you can order different versions. So right now there's this beautiful red version that's available. It's, it's amazing, but I'm not going to order it. So since I've got this deck, um, what I wanna say, this deck has really encouraged me to start looking at historical decks. I love what the creator has done in combining all of these historical decks to create this original deck. And it's really beautifully done. I love the borders. I love the shading of the color. I love her choices for the aces. They are so beautiful. I believe these are from the Soprafino. And so I've ordered a version of the Soprafino through Tarot BG and I can't wait for it to, it to come. Um, what I did order in the meantime was this uh, deck from Los Garbio. So this is the Libra de Thoth, the Tarot Atea. And so I'll show you some of the cards that are similar. One of the things I don't know is that if the Tarot by 7 creator has included the keywords that are on the Atea or if she has adopted more RWS appropriate keywords because the Atea has a completely different system. And so if you had the Atea keywords, it would be very hard for anybody um, who was doing more, I want to say contemporary readings and, and reading with using this as an RWS clone, because it does not work as an RWS clone if she's used the keywords uh, from the original Atea deck. And I'll show you a few of those. This Hierophant does not come from Atea. 
So I'm assuming um, this is some combination of a few cards, but it's a really beautiful card. I love the colors um, that she chose. It's, it's amazing. And this Ten of Pentacles. So the, the miners come from Pixie's artwork, and she has added her own little touch to some of these. So you can really see the coins in this ten. It's, it's really kind of cool. So here's an example. So here's the sun card from the um, Atea. And then here is the sun card in the Los Carabeo deck. So you can see the color has slightly changed and she's kind of, it's a little, the face of the sun is a little wider. And then on the top keyword, we have clarity and then fire down below. And the card is called La Lumiere. And it is number two card, which is really interesting. So, so yeah. And so I'm just wondering if when you get the numbers on these cards, so if what number this is, I'm assuming she does it in a, in an RWS way. There's the, the Ace of Wands, Ace of Baton. And here is the judgment card. I think I pulled that one out for you. So here's the judgment from the Atea. And this one is called judgment. Judgment upright and judgment reversed. So that one is pretty much straight up from that deck. And in the Atea, that's number 16. And the world card, which is called voyage upright and earth in the reversed is card number five in the Atea. So this has been totally fascinating to me and I really, um, I'm gonna take my time with this and I've got uh, so many decks that I'm breaking in and learning and different things I'm doing, but I've just found and a different level of appreciation for Deck of the Bastard because it's kind of taken me in um, another direction with the tarot and looking at some of the majors also in a completely different way because the Atea system is nothing like um, like RWS. So yeah, this one is called, I believe, Mariage, the lover's card. And the court cards in Deck of the Bastard, I believe, are also from the Atea deck. Uh, maybe not. So here is the knight. So that's the knight of wands is that the knight of wands maybe that's the card no she looked like she's used this one for the chariot sorry there's the chariot and strength and the hermit and the wheel and this one is justice le pendu so that just definitely does not come from the atea um mortality does but i wanted to show you Court cards, so just give me a second. So here is the Knight of Wands. And just so you know, so this these do come from that same deck, from the Atea deck. And there is the King of Wands. And that's what it looks like. So it's very, she's just shifted the color. Yeah. So super interesting to me. I'm just really enjoying playing with the Deck of the Bastard. And once I get my little pouch, it'll have a beautiful home to go into. Thank you very much for watching. I would love to chat with you in the comments below about any of the decks that I shared with you today. Please make sure to subscribe. Here's the sixes from Pixie's Art. And then click the bell so you can get all the notifications when I post videos. I go live every Thursday night, six about 6 p.m. Pacific time, and we chat about tarot and all things metaphysical. If you would like to support the work that I'm doing, there's also a Ko-fi link. You can buy me a cup of coffee in the description box below. Here's the Knights, Knight of Swords, Knight of Cups, Knight of Pentacles, and uh, Knight of Battens. <laughs> Stay well, my friends. Namaste.